Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the Bald Explorer, and I'm out on a rather peculiar exploration today. We're reading a book in my lives, um, my book reading lives, called A Sussex Peep Show by Walter Wilkinson. And it's the story of a guy and his mate who take a Punch and Judy show around Sussex. It's a book that was published in 1933, I think, originally, and he starts his journey in the village of Rudgwick. Now, as we've started to read the book, we're on chapter two, chapter three, and I thought it'd be quite fun to try and track, for those people who are watching with me, um, where he goes. So I'm starting here by the King's Head pub, which would have been there in 19... 33 of course it's a very beautiful old pub and he would have come into Sussex from Surrey on the Cranley Ewhurst Road by the looks of things and he comes here now I don't know how true this story is but he was a real puppeteer and he really did tour around so we can only assume that it's true um, and he meanders along with his booth um, on a cart and all this stuff that he's got folded up and he comes down here and he talks about the hill and he's looking for somewhere to do his first performance and they get down to here and he talks about how it's all on a hill and there's nowhere to do it so he comes out and then the next thing we discover that he has carried on on and on across the countryside and ends up in Whisper Green well, that's some distance from here and some walk. I just thought I would take a stroll up and just show you the church here. He doesn't mention that, that they stop or go into the church, although they do later on in the book use the church as a place of shelter out of the rain. But this is a particularly lovely church, so whilst I've driven all this way to Rusborough, I thought, um, to Rudgwick, I thought I may as well have a quick gander at it. Holy Trinity, yes. I have actually um, done a walk around here before and ended up the other side of the church on a video, but um, on this occasion, we're not hanging about. So, I'm gonna head back down to my car, which I've just parked down here, down the hill, and have a look at the map and see if there's a, a more obvious route to which he must have take, taken to get to Whisper Green. Looking at the map, there are main roads which will sort of take you there. You could go via Loxwood and down, um, or you could get onto, um, go towards Horsham and then get onto the A20, nine and head um, to Billingshurst and then go west to Westbrook Green. Now that's what somebody would probably do if they were driving today. There are some wiggly back roads and Walter Wilkinson with his puppet show or his peep show in the old fashioned style didn't want to go on the modern roads because of the motorist. He, he was very much keen to take these old backways and byways so I think that's what he did now looking at the map there's a couple of possibilities so I'm going to drive on one of those and make my way to Whisper Green and see if we can find out what happened when he got there I'm on the Loxwood Road at the moment and passing the mucky duck by the looks of things. Loxwood is only two miles away from me. There's two choices. One, he could have gone down towards the Haven, a road called the Haven, which he might have done because actually when you come to the end of the high street in Rudgwick and you hit the uh, 286, is it, to Guildford? If you cross straight over, you'd be going towards Whisper Green, but then it veers away. Whereas if you go towards Loxwood, which is what I'm doing, there's a left-hand turning that sort of 
almost takes you to Whisper Green. So I don't know. And these roads would have been perhaps a little bit less wide um, uh, 90 years ago and probably only just tarmacked. There are, of course, footpaths which he may have taken instead of any of these back roads. Narrow roads and quite windy. Oh, yes. I've stopped. Um, I think this is Drunjwick Road or Dunjwick Road. I just caught the sign. It's the left, the little wiggly left-hand turn that I wanted to, to take. But I noticed a bridge. I've just come over, so just wanted to have a look and see what we've passed, whether it's a river or a railway or even a canal, because on the way to Loxwood there is a, the Arran and um, Way Canal. Well, that's fascinating, just as I thought. This bridge, as I went over it, I thought this doesn't look like any ordinary bridge. It's a canal bridge. And just below me is part of the Arran and Way Canal. And I guess that must be um, a lock. Yes, we're at uh, Drunjwick Lane Canal Bridge, rebuilt in 2001. I'm just reading the sign here. It says the original bridge over the way an Arran canal was opened in 1816 and after the canal was abandoned in 1871 the bridge remained in position for 34 years but destroyed in 1905. Um, I thought that just down here was a lock but maybe it isn't. Let's have a look and see what's just down there. There's clearly some sort of channel here that the canal went through and I'm not quite sure what this significance is but you can see where the canal used to go through the bridge there down here and and along Oh, this is great. This is great. Here we go. This is what this is all about. <laughs> Some people probably already knew that. Um, I'm just showing my ignorance. Drunjwick Aqueduct, built by the Way and Aaron Canal Trust in the year 2002. Um, the aqueduct has been possible through generous donations. So presumably there's... Um, so the canal goes over a river. I don't know what river that is whether that's part of an, a tributary to the Arran. But down there, green slimy water, um, heading this way and that way, and the canal through this, what I thought was a lock, the narrow channel, is um, just a basin uh, or a, a, tr a trough or a, a tube, or however you want to call it, is the aqueduct going over the top. And then you've got the road bridge over there with a great view through it. Fantastic, fantastic little bit of heritage. So it would be nice to think that um, William, sorry, Walter, Walk, Walter Wilkinson came across here and peered down in 1933, although it uh, may well have been abandoned then um, at that point and not really restored. But he may have come across the road up there and headed off towards Whisper Green. I've parked up in Whisper Green, I've got here now, but I've just walked back um, and I'm getting more and more certain that this must be the route that Walter took with his booth because you get the signage back round the corner there to Whisper Green, which I'm afraid I didn't film, 
But as you come onto this road, he talks about how the church spire hoves into view, and it really does. And then you get past this wonderful place, Sweephurst Farm. This looks just absolutely amazing. This would have been here a hundred years ago, easily. And what an incredible farm with a, with a great big um, threshing barn over there, a uh, beautiful farmhouse behind me, and then this incredible old barn here. Just absolutely brilliant. So I th I'm getting more and more convinced that he came this way. He doesn't mention the farm, but he does mention some of the old buildings en route. And of course these old roads here, now they're tarmacked, but 90 years ago, perhaps not as in good condition as they are today. But that looks absolutely fantastic, that farm. Of course, it's probably in the hands of somebody who has got quite a lot of money now and is not a working farm anymore. I see they've got some new homes coming into Whisborough Green, just going up. So, of course, they wouldn't have been here when Walter came along. But we enter at the north end of the green next to a pub called the Cricketers. And again, another beautiful old pub. And it takes you out onto the green. So I've come that way from the Loxwood direction. Billingshurst, according to that sign, is straight on. It's actually round that way a bit and south. Curdford is, is that way. In front of me is the great Whisper Green, Village Green. There's other little areas to the side which clearly have not been built on. But when Walter comes here with his little booth on his little cart, he thinks this is the perfect place to set up and do some shows which it probably is, but he asks a labourer, the first one is, um, he doesn't really understand, and then he goes and asks somebody else, and they suggest that he talk to a gentleman, uh, I think he was a colonel, I can't remember now, um, and he says, no, 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 you want to go down to a field. Well, I've no idea where that field could possibly have been but you couldn't do it, he couldn't do it here because he was told gypsies come along and set up on the green and they're always turfed away. And so because of that, they didn't want to encourage anyone erecting anything. Now it's very odd because this is actually quite a big green and for a Punch and Judy booth, you could set it up quite easily and have a, a crowd of people around. I don't know how many people he would have aimed to have got about 20, 30, maybe 40, um, quite easily in a corner without disturbing anybody. But I guess they wanted to do several performances if they could and to glean as much money busking with the peep show um, or the Punch and Judy show as much as they could. Just up ahead, great big barn and then the church on its hearst, on its hill. Right, I will continue my journey in another video. Thank you so much for watching this one. It's all been a bit rough. Just did this on a bit of a spur of the moment, but next time I'll plan the route a little bit um, more carefully and take note of actually where he goes. It's an interesting story. If you miss the live, I'll leave the links to the actual readings and uh, you can follow the story there. And I will continue in the uh, ad hoc way that I do to do more. Anyway, thanks so much. Don't forget to follow, like and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this little excursion and I will continue. Till next time, bye bye.